Welcome back. In this video, we'll start introducing the Java source code that we spoke about before. So the problem we're trying to solve now is that we have 10 uh, short line segments and these 10 short line segments, they can be split into two groups of five and these or those five segments themselves, they make up uh, one dashed line as you can see in this figure here. So we have uh, 10 short line segments 1 2 3 4 all up all the way to 10 and Then if, as you can notice these five this short one short one short one short one short one They make up a dashed line so these can be considered one dashed line the beginning is here The start end point is here and the end end point is here or the other way around and then the other five also uh, make up another dashed line I hope the idea makes sense and the idea now is that we will use genetic algorithms to solve the problem of finding uh, uh, which actually uh, short line segments make up this dashed line and this dashed line. So as we explained over the last two videos, the details of the idea are there. And now we go to our source code. I'm using Eclipse here. This is Java. Hopefully you are uh, comfortable with Java. Now, what we do is, uh, I'm sorry, what I have here is I have four classes. I have this binary GA, binary genetic algorithms, because we'll use binary representation. A utility class, I'll tell you what this does. A class called point to represent a point, basically just to give it two coordinates, X and Y. And a class dash to represent a dash by using its two points. So the point here is from this class, right? And we just create a class dash, which uh, uh, it takes two points as parameters, right? This is the constructor. Uh, now, for our genetic algorithm, well, remember we mentioned we wanted to use um, um, microbial genetic algorithm. By the way, the code here is heavily based on uh, the code that you can find here. So please refer to this, this article. This is an interesting problem as well. Now, we start by creating our population size. We'll say we'll have 30 elements or 30 chromosomes. And the length of the chromosome, as we mentioned, we have 10 dashes. So it'll be of length 10. And then here we'll have some mutation rate. We'll say 0 0.1. Uh, Recombination or crossover rate, we'll, we'll say cross over rate. We'll say 0 0.5. Basically, what we'll do, we'll use these to uh, show how ran randomness works. So we'll try to generate a random number and then compare it against this rate. If it's less than or equal than or larger than, then we can do, for example, mutation. Otherwise, we don't. Likewise, for the crossover, we'll gener generate a random number, compare it against this. If it's more than that, more than uh, point 0 0.5, then we can apply crossover. Otherwise, we don't. As I said, we will show, see that in the code in uh, a few minutes. And this is the maximum number of tools. How many times do we actually try? How many t tools do we actually go through, right? And now we, uh, I actually explained this concept of collinearity for the dashes. So the radius of collinearity, you can refer to the slides. Um, here we said that for two dashes to be collinear, um, this distance so you can have the start and end of the dash one start and end of the second dash and then this distance here needs to be within a very small uh, range and that's the radius of collinearity and then um, to add more for two dashes to be considered adjacent the distance between them should be within again a short range we spoke about the dash length but we got we're not going to use it we'll just assume that our dashes are indeed short to make it simpler so we have the radius of collinearity 0.5 and the dash separation 1.5 now what i do here is i just create the dashes d1 d2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 and as you have seen here i've given them those numbers so this will be dash number one uh, x1 y1 are 2 and 6 x2 y2 are 4 and 6 and so on and so forth for the rest of them and then after that, I'll play, I place them in an array of type dash 
and notice now the order is d1 d6 d2 d7 d3 d8 um, if you remember in the um, in the previous videos I mentioned that we need to keep them in order so for example if you look at the image here we don't want dash 2 to be before dash 1 in this array the reason is that we wanted to keep it simple so we can compare dash 1 against dash 2 dash 2 against dash 3 that 3 against 4 4 against 5 likewise for these ones we don't want this to be here so we would not want to compare 2 against 1 and then maybe 2 against 3 right uh, that's a uh, that's called a permutation problem we'll come to that in the next videos right so you can you can uh, change these as you wish as long as you keep the order and then we just have our population now it's a 2d uh, it's a matrix of um, size 30 and each element of the matrix is of length 10 it's because it's um, each element will be the chromosome so we can actually say yeah the chromosome length rather than saying 10 rather than hard coding it right and then uh, just to give a, a simple example there and here I have the main method and I call this method called run GA the run GA the method uh, you can read here some uh, uh, comments what it does is as we mentioned before we will randomly choose we will in initialize our population first we'll fill it with randomly generated chromosomes first or randomly generated solutions first and then we'll choose two elements randomly and then we'll compare them against each other so let's see the method called init population what it does um, init population what we do here is we just randomly fill uh, uh, each chromosome with either 0 or 1 we mentioned that um, we need uh, if the if the uh, element is 0 that means the dash belongs to one group if the element is 1 if the value is 1 then the dash belongs to the other group and we mentioned that we want to use the indices of the dashes in that uh, dashes array that we saw earlier or the array of dashes right so initialize population by filling the elements randomly and then after that remember the values need to be 0 and 1 by the way I here use a method called random double and this method is declared here as you can see it just returns a random number such that it's larger than 0 less larger than equal 0 less than equal 1 right it's of type double and fill uh, the population randomly after that we choose two elements randomly call them a and b right so choose two elements randomly call them a and b this why uh, this do while loop here just to make sure that a and b are not the same so we don't we want we want two different elements two different chromosomes or two different solutions and then what we do is we evaluate solution a and solution b and we check if uh, the fitness or the evaluation of solution a is larger than b then our winner is a and our loser is b otherwise our winner will be and our loser will be a right uh, we'll come to how the evalu evalu solution method works if that is the case so we now we know which one is winner which one is loser then if you remember from the last videos we said we will only now change the loser chromosome we want this el elitism so we'll keep the winner in the breed in the population and we'll change uh, the loser the way we do that is we loop now through the chromosome th through the actual loser through the elements of the loser and then we generate a random number right random double and compare it now to the crossover crossover rate that we explained earlier if it's less than that crossover rate then do some crossover copy the the ith bit from the winner into the ith place of the loser so right so we're overwriting the loser here we're changing the loser we, this is crossover and then likewise if uh, we generate a random number and if it's less than mutation rate then we toggle that ith element if it's one we change it to zero if it's zero we change it to one after that now the loser now becomes a new chromosome or a new solution because we applied um, uh, crossover or mutation or mutate and mutation if none of these uh, it has been applied if this condition was not these two conditions were not true then the loser won't change and then we evaluate it again if it has changed of course if it returns minus one then we just display the results and we exit 
the uh, uh, the tournament we exit the program right so now here if you remember we said we needed two stop we need uh, some stopping conditions now we have two stopping conditions if we reach the maximum number of tournaments or if we uh, if the evaluation if the fitness of the loser is minus one again i will explain this evaluate solution uh, uh, method in the next video i'm gonna stop here thanks very much and i'll see you next time